All right. Hear that? Are you getting ready? Are you getting ready? Are you getting ready? He was a musician, a dancer, a hunter, a great teacher. He was everything. On my money, he was more exciting than any other rock and roll performer I ever saw. He could dance Mick Jagger off the stage in a second. I'm gonna rock it. And he used to rock it. Then I got more, more best, you know? And I was the drinker. <laughs> Alcohol was an issue. He might get on the charge and run amok or go missing. Where the fuck is George? There's the fellow that and flair, the sex appeal, the want and the energy. And you can't leave out the blackness. I want to educate black and white. That was my aim. That's why I believe there's the two worlds in me. I saw George and the Rocky Band play to thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people all around Australia. And I saw how George could reach out and touch people, open their hearts to make them celebrate and embrace Aboriginality and just dance with us and sing our song. We are experiencing an ongoing and relentless revolution. Warfare, commerce and popular culture are colliding and technology is the driving force. Modern wars are fought via remote control. Drone strikes kill 30 civilians per terrorist kill and back home drone pilots suffer record rates of mental illness. Military cyber weapons are striking their targets with lines of code. The Stuxnet computer virus did more damage than a physical airstrike. While in Los Angeles, this reporter may have been assassinated by digital car hacking. Technology is changing the way we live, the way we protest, and the way we fight wars. Hacktivism, digital surveillance, and information warfare. We could be witnessing the end of privacy. But there's good news too. Data mining and online networks are driving social change and political liberation. Grassroots communities are finding new ways to build an internet of things and improve the world around them. NGOs and movie stars run satellite surveillance missions in the skies over Africa. They call themselves the paparazzi of genocide and they are the cutting edge of private warfare. Digital forces are reshaping our physical world. In Texas, this man has built a downloadable gun. By Defense Distributed in Austin, Texas. While in Pittsburgh, a generation of DIY cyborgs are hacking the human body. I have a little magnet implanted in my pinky. Revealing interviews. After I was done in the military, I kind of had like uh, emotional issues motion graphics and groundbreaking interactivity. A visual feast for information thrill seekers. Shocking, thought provoking, compelling. This is the digital revolution. This is Conflict Now. Tensions at the beach, honestly, never felt it. Until. Life changed. I couldn't look at an Aussie the same. They couldn't look at me the same. You can see the storm coming, but you, you kind of can't stop it. Send them home! 
no one wanted to admit that racism had anything to do with the Cronulla riots. The slogans and Aussie pride and what's Aussie pride? I'm an Aussie. I've got pride in Australia. I love Australia. What are, what are you trying to say? And even up till now, it's like a bad dream. I just did not think that this could happen in Australia. My name is Stanley Kramer. Nowadays, a motion picture producer engages in a great variety and types of battle. Today, every inhabitant of this planet must contemplate the day when this planet may no longer be habitable. Neville Shute bought the most appalling concept of all to a mainstream audience. For me, it was real, just penetrated every bone of my body. I've never reached the end of it without having tears in my eyes. It was a serious possibility for the world. On the Beach had met with an extraordinary public response when it was released in America. I think it was very insightful of him to write this novel, and even more so for Stanley to buy the rights to it and make the film. I think Australia, like a lot of places in this world, are fascinated with Hollywood and fascinated with motion pictures and particularly with stars. And they were thrilled with Gregory Peck and Ava Gardner, of course. I, um, I take it you put me to bed. They hounded her like the paparazzi does now because she was a good story. She'd make terrible statements about this picture is about the end of the world and I think this is the perfect place to be for that. I think that my dad would be very surprised that it has lasted for 50 years. Maybe a bit disappointed that the world hadn't learned anything. For over 50,000 years, people have survived in the harshest environments on Earth. We're just starting to get hints at how complicated life was. Now, in a landmark television series, we explore the astounding achievements of the first Australians. This place is called an adaptation, isn't it? From the makers of Contact. The intimate snapshot of life. To me, it's magic. First Footprints starts Sunday, 9.25, ABC One. They would dearly like to get me out of a recognised position within their structured church because I'm an embarrassment. See, they personalise it. Bob Maguire, Bob Maguire, Bob Maguire, Bob Maguire. People get confused and think Bob Maguire's talking about Bob Maguire. I want to talk about a bigger picture, but I'm a loyalist, therefore I can't attack headquarters. And don't forget to advise me. Shut up. 
Yeah, or whatever. Bob gives the church hierarchy a bit of pain and grief because he is willing to be outspoken on all sorts of issues at any time in any media. You don't want to mess with the Roman church. You've got this clash of cultures between what would Jesus do and what would the Roman Pope do. It's a Roman phenomenon. They've got to find some mechanism for dealing with dissidents. Short of the Herald Sun saying we was wrong, the firing squad will still take aim. I'm going to explain to a senior cleric why we're spending money on the poor. Now, to me, that's offensive, not only intellectually, but religiously and spiritually. Oh, you might sack me. He has a great understanding of what the disadvantage is, like a heartfelt understanding of those things. Oh, I don't know if he can sack me. It was a definite decision on the part of the hierarchy that Father Bob should retire. There was no question he had to retire. If you fake a miracle, like, oh my God, can you believe this statue yeah. is? Mary is crying herself we're not beyond tears, because that, that's how, much, how sad she is no, on leaving. we're not beyond that. I went up this morning to that beautiful statue up at the shrine and the inscription is, don't forget me, Cobber. He's saying there's no priest, there's no priest. Oh, excuse me, there's one here. Let us unleash the dogs of war. Ready to leave your comfort zone? Jake, Sam, you will orienteer a seven kilometre walk with Andy and Felix. Brains and brawn, excellent choice, sir. There's a shortcut. Maybe it's not such a good idea to leave the path. Let's go. <laughs> shortcut to where? Well, it looked like a shortcut. It's slipping. Great. Well done, freak. Kill a storm. Run! 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 Faster, nerd! Faster! This way! Whoa, whoa. Can you tell us how to get to Bremen? Yeah! I was only gone one night. Get out! See? What? Everyone who knows us... Oh, sorry. ...has forgotten us. Dad! Can I help you? Mum? So then, if we don't exist, we don't have to follow any boring rules. Woo this is great! Right, out! It's not just that we've been forgotten. Mum! There are whole new lives. Hello? Like a different version of the same reality. I just want to go home. there might be forces at play which we don't understand. But I'll find an answer. Someone has to remember us. Ellen! Do I know you? Does this look familiar? Please. We should stick together. Stop! Police! Whatever's going on happened to all of us. Where are you going? To work out what the hell happened to my life. They stopped watching us! Divinity of the elements. I summon thee.
sure you belong in this world, Ruben. They fought one of the greatest battles in Australian history. <laughs> they fought for power. And they fought like hell. You don't want to go to war with me. From the creators of How's That, the next incredible saga, <laughs> the Packers and the Murdochs. For the first time, the epic true story. Packers, they are old news. We need to stop him. Lucky Hugh delivers another titanic performance. I still run this company! With Patrick Bramall and a stellar Aussie cast in the must-see drama event. I'm not dead yet, you bastard! Power Games, soon on Nine. This is not so good. Whoa. What else can go wrong? Mom! Dad! Cold Red! It's Sam! You mean a resident danger magnet? Sam's gone swimming in the ocean with the tiger shark! I thought it had been a quiet morning. <laughs> nice move, little brother. Stuff like this happens to Sam all the time. Hey, Guinness, we're here to help. How's it going? This is the best day of my life! Good kitty. Let's be friends. <sighs> Sam, annoying, disorganized, late for everything. <coughs> but he's pretty hot. Oh, stop! That's my brother you're talking about. What are the dangers you're gonna magnetize to us? Magnetize? Look it up in the dictionary. It's got a photo of you surrounded by danger. <laughs> ah! Ah! Not me! Do you know what that means? It means it's not gonna get me! And there's an elephant trying to kill me! I need help! There's a bird in the house! Ah! Not a good time, Ricky! Do you remember what this river's named after? The Anaconda! It's not the Anacondas we need to worry about. It's the Piranhas. That makes me feel so much better! Good times, eh, Ricky? Memories. <gasps> Panther! Jack, you're a panther, whatever. Doesn't take you long, does it, Sam? If you need help, medical help, it is hard to get. If you don't have the money, you probably won't get help. It's just that simple. I really have a heart for people who are in poverty. I really want to make a difference. I really want my life to have meaning that instinct in you. I just have something in that, okay, well of course, I have to do something. Uh, my name is Scott. I think we may be able to help you. Um, if you will let me, we would like to take you to Monrovia. We have, we have a ship. And the doctors will look at you for free. is a day full of joy and a, and a day full of sadness too because you see so many different people, some that you can help. But there's also the people that you see and you think, wow, we can't help them. It's hard to say to someone with so much hope of being helped, no, we can't help you and you will die from this. They get picked out one by one from the whole country and they come individually on their day of operation. Their family comes and they're all dressed in their best clothes because they really, and it really is their last hope. When 
someone's bandage gets taken down for the first time and they really look in the mirror and you can experience their joy. You see them, even in the recovery room, they'll reach up and they'll, just, they'll feel because they, they want to confirm you know, that this thing that has been with them for so long is, is really gone. And then they sort of relax and back into their kind of their haze, post-anesthetic haze. But they're, they're awake enough that they want to make sure that, that thing is gone. You look fine. You look all right. In June last year, a computer virus called Stuxnet was discovered lurking in the data banks of power plants, traffic control systems, and factories around the world. 20 times more complex than any previous virus code, it had an array of capabilities. Among them, the ability to turn up the pressure inside nuclear reactors or switch off oil pipelines, and Stuxnet could tell the system operators everything was normal. Unlike most viruses, Stuxnet doesn't carry the usual forged security clearance that helps viruses burrow into systems. It actually had a real clearance, stolen from one of the most reputable computer technology companies in the world. It exploited security gaps that system creators are unaware of. These holes are known as zero days, and the most successful viruses exploit them. The details of a zero day can be sold on the black market for $100,000. Stuxnet took advantage of 20 zero days. But once it got into a system, it didn't always activate. Buried deep in the Stuxnet code was a specific target. Without that target, the virus remained dormant. What was it looking to shut down? The centrifuges that spin nuclear material at Iran's enrichment facilities. Stuxnet was a weapon the first to be made entirely out of code. The Washington-based Institute for Science and International Security says the virus may have shut down a thousand centrifuges at Natanz, Iran's main enrichment facility, last year. In November, the International Atomic Energy Agency, the UN's nuclear watchdog, said Iran had suspended work at its nuclear facilities without explaining why. Many observers credited Stuxnet. Last month, the Iranian government conceded the virus's infection of the Bashir nuclear facility, still under construction, meant that switching the plant on could lead to a national electricity blackout. Iran has responded to the attack with an open call for hackers to join the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and has reportedly amassed the second largest online army in the world. So who was behind Stuxnet? There's no evidence beyond rumour. Some have it that Israel is responsible because the virus code apparently contains references to the Hebrew Bible, 
Others believe the US was involved in the testing and development. The finger has even been pointed at Siemens' mobile phone company, whose software is used by the Iranian regime. The most important question may not be who designed it, but who will redesign it. The evolution has been so fast that nine months after its detection, the first virus that could crash power grids or destroy oil pipelines is available online for anyone to download and tinker with. You can watch people on YouTube pulling Stuxnet apart. It's an open source weapon. And there's no way of knowing who will use it or what they will use it for.